Okay. The date is October 31st, 2017. In the lunar cycle, it thoughts to you when cold arrives. And it's windy at Spobikimi this Halloween day. So windy, I thought I would have to narrate like this after the fact rather than trying to record in the field. At North Pond, as you just saw, there was a flock of American widgeons who are usually the last of the waterfowl to stop here on the migration out. We should be receiving some winter inward migrants pretty soon. On Sunday, I saw green-winged teals here, but not today. Also saw a very skinny blue heron, but haven't seen that bird since it flew away when uh, my student and I were visiting on Sunday. This is, of course, the food cache, the beaver's lodge, growing larger. The beavers are putting in a lot of work. Um, they, they have a lot to, to gather. They have to survive on this all winter. Looking toward South Pond, you have two different uh, little groups of mallards, both kind of tightly um, bound together like this. I don't know if this is a response to the wind uh, or what's going on, why the groups were connected so tightly or st sticking so close to each other today. This here, I believe, is a young six skinny a juvenile bald eagle. Starting to see more eagles along the river now. This is the second one I've seen at Spopikimi in under a week. Another bird that's there still may not leave for the winter. We'll see. There has been one that stayed recently. This is a belted kingfisher. Apukini. White necklace. So one of my objectives today was to go and look at something that my student and I noticed on Sunday. I was telling her about my study that I had begun on the cottonwood trees and as we were walking through the forest she noted that she didn't see very many saplings and I told her well that's because you find them on the edges of the forest it's too shaded inside to find them um, and indeed there are a lot of saplings along the edge of the forest so I'm going to follow that skirt and see uh, what I can learn along the way. These are some saplings here. You know, it's hard to distinguish them from the grass, perhaps, but there's lots of them growing all around a uh, tree that was knocked down by a beaver. Okay, so one of the things that I th was thinking about as I was out today was, I wonder whether when a beaver knocks down a tree, whether the tree responds, the root system responds, by sending up these shoots all around it right for for a wide range and if a tree falls other places does it have the same thing that happens well looking at a little meadow here just close by walking into the forest looking at a, at a meadow uh, where you'd think that these trees would send up shoots from their roots because there's plenty of room to grow new trees no saplings here zero so at least in this instance um, there seems to be something going on different on the edge zone. Something that may or may not involve beavers. Uh, but certainly produces a lot of new saplings. Just wanted to uh, also take a look at this. This is the Swanson's hawk nest that they've been building the last couple of years. They've nested there before, but their nest f fell down. Um, one of the interesting things that my student noticed on the, or noted on the weekend when I told her that I didn't understand why they didn't nest in their nest the last couple of years even though they've been building it, she said maybe they tried but maybe they got mobbed out of there by the smaller birds and that makes a lot of sense because this is big time red winged blackbird territory all along the, uh, the wet meadows here. So I'm going to walk the path and go a little further.
there are a lot of trees along the kind of the edge zone of the wet meadows that are not sending up shoots for saplings. Um, many of these trees have this chicken wire put around them. Uh, this was put here, as I mentioned in my video from last week, uh, to deter beavers from knocking down the trees. As a beaver man, <laughs> I'm very curious about this. As I was looking here, I noticed there's a um, there's an owl feather. Now I don't take that to be any omen or anything like that. Um, I just figure it is another communication from the forest. It's telling me that there's been an owl recently hunting in the area, if not um, perching. I should keep my eye out for that owl. It's a great horned owl. So I couldn't help myself. I ended up undoing the chicken wire on this tree, if for no other reason that I know that these wires catch up snakes. But looking at this one, after I undid the chicken wire, um, I saw that the base of the tree was kind of discolored from having had a bunch of mulch caught between the chicken wire and the tree. And I didn't know whether that may, would might maybe make the tree susceptible to anything, to have that uh, damp base like that. Looking over at another couple of neighboring trees that have that same chicken wire around it, they have caught a lot of debris in there, a lot of leaves, which probably makes some mice happy, but might not be the best thing for the tree. I don't know. But uh, my feeling going into this project when I come and ask the trees to teach me something, the first thing they're telling me is, hey, why don't you uh, take these, these things off of us and then maybe we'll talk. <laughs> That's just kind of the feeling I get because um, this is definitely a buffer between them and their evolution, what they have come to be all these thousands of years in this environment. Here's an area with a lot of saplings on the fringe, on the edge zone, some of which the beavers are even harvesting from. But you can see that there are little stumps of larger saplings, right? That were harvested before. Now each one's still got, it's, it's regrowing, okay? It's replenishing itself. And, um, and sending up even more shoots, I believe, off of the off of the stump, just by the by the roots. You can see how close to the edge of the actual forest it is. When all is said and done, regarding that wire, it doesn't really make too much difference. Uh, the beavers come in, they'll just yank it down and take a tree if they want to take it. However, there's a much stronger wire that's now been put up as a, as a fence, as a palisade to some of the trees along the river here. I'll probably be getting to those too. So that was just a really brief visit that I had to the pond today. I just really wanted to walk that edge zone and um, see the saplings for myself after having talk, talked about them with my student. I also wanted to check and see if the teals and the heron were here, but they aren't. <laughs>